Hey everyone, Knowledge here with Reach Your Summit. In this video, I'm going to give you all a closer look at the Ultra Olympus 5 Mid Hiker. All right, thanks for joining me. So. Last year, I put a video up on this channel going over some different foot care techniques that I like to use when I'm out on a backpacking trip or through hike. Just because self-care is so important in helping us cover mileage each day and achieving our objectives or goals. So in that video, I very briefly touched on footwear and had shown the Ultra Olympus 5 mid, but I didn't have a full video going over this shoe. So I thought I would put together a video going over this shoe a little bit more in detail. Now that we're getting closer to the winter time here in the Northeast, especially up in Northern New England. Leading up to this specific shoe, I had been wearing the Ultra Lone Peak 4 Mid RSMs. I've been wearing that for the last four winters and it served me really well. Great in the winter time, it was not insulated, but since I run really warm, I found it to be very comfortable. That shoe was a mid height, so the mid height helped give me a little bit of extra protection, keep some snow out, gave me the ground feel that I really enjoyed with the Lone Peak 4s when I was using those out on trail. And it just had a very familiar fit and feel. That shoe was waterproof and it used uh, event fabric, which is going to be similar to Gore-Tex. The shoe worked beautifully with snowshoes and it worked pretty well to a certain extent when I was using micro spikes. So when it came time to getting a new dedicated winter shoe that was waterproof, mid-height and not insulated, I was very close to getting the Ultra Lone Peak Mid All Weather. And then I saw that they were releasing the Olympus 5 Mid. This is waterproof, traction is going to be much greater than what the Lone Peak offered. And so that led me here. Let me get into the specs of the shoe and I'll give you my first impressions of using this shoe last winter when backpacking. So to kick things off, this shoe is $220. For the fit, I found this to run a little bit small. So for frame of reference, I wear a size 11 with the Ultra Lone Peaks. And for the Ultra Olympus 4, I would also been wearing a size 11. With the non-waterproof Olympus 5, I wear a size 11 and a half, and I found the size 11 and a half for these to be a very similar fit. It does have the original foot shape, which is Ultra's widest foot shape that they offer. So the Ultra Olympus 5 is very similar to the Lone Peaks as far as the width of the fit goes. On my scale, a pair of these weigh 35 ounces or right around 2.2 pounds. A majority of the upper of the shoe is made out of leather. The shoe has a Gore-Tex liner to it, so it is fully waterproof. The traction on the bottom of the Olympus 5 mid is the same as the non-waterproof Olympus 5s. So you're getting that really good grippy Vibra Mega Grip. And you'll also get a Y channel down at the bottom similar to the Olympus 5, which helps with stabilization and flexibility of the shoe. The upper of the shoe has a couple of hooks to really lock in the lacing and it has a robust heel pull tab on the back but there are no gator traps for this specific shoe and that's all right. Most of the time for using this in the winter for me, I wear a knee high gator in the snow and that gator specifically has a strap that wraps underneath the shoe. And the stack height for the shoe is going to be 33 millimeters. So the same as the non-waterproof Olympus 5s. 
and it features the zero drop. The shoe also has a reinforced toe guard in the upper, which helps give me really good toe protection. I find my ankle to be locked in. There's a really nice reinforced heel cup on the back, and overall, it's just a really good fit for me. It also has the anatomically correct foot shape, which you will find with all of Ultra's shoes. This is a shoe that I bought specifically for winter backpacking and winter hiking. Four times when a non-waterproof trail runner is not enough and when a dedicated mountaineering boot is way too excessive. I run really warm, so most of the time having something insulated in the winter time is just way too much for me. So I like to extend my non-waterproof trail runners into the winter time when it's appropriate. And I'll do that by adding a waterproof sock or I'll just add a vapor barrier liner around my foot to give me the waterproofing that I am not getting with this shoe. By combining this with a shoe like this, I'm able to still get the flexibility and the more natural foot movement and ankle rotation that I get during my three season backpacking trips and through hikes. And for some other specific trips, a dedicated mountaineering boot might be more suitable. These are going to be very stiff, very rigid. So my foot is really locked into this specific type of shoe. They are insulated and they're going to be made more for wearing crampons when I'm hiking or backpacking in very harsh conditions, very steep environments, somewhere where I need the most optimal traction possible. But because these are so stiff and rigid, they're not something that I want to be wearing all of the time for backpacking or hiking. So this has its appropriate conditions and types of trips, the same as my non-waterproof trail runners do. So that's where the Olympus 5 mid comes into play. This is kind of a happy medium for me between my non-waterproof trail runners and my insulated mountaineering boot. So I've been pretty happy with this shoe so far. The max cushion is really nice at pulling me up off of solid ice and snow, cold solid ground. It helps give me a little bit more insulation than the Lone Peaks did, but I do miss having the ground feel that I really enjoyed with those Lone Peak Mid RSMs. The Vibra Mega Grip, it's very difficult to compare a lot of traction to that. The traction on this shoe is far greater than anything that I experienced with the Lone Peak 4 mids. The shoe works really well with snowshoes, but also because it's a little bit more rigid, it works a lot better with micro spikes than the Lone Peaks did. So having the, the structure to the shoe helps it perform a little bit better with those types of traction when you're out in the snow, and it feels a little bit more comfortable to wear. Gore-Tex has been excellent. It does its job. And because I'm not hiking long mileage or hiking very fast, in in the winter time. I'm not over exerting myself like I might be during spring through fall. So I've had very minor sweat buildup inside of this shoe so far. The shoe is very stable and it gives me a good amount of support around the ankle, which I like having when I'm wearing snowshoes with this shoe. So last winter, we had a very mild winter here in the Northeast. So I didn't get a chance to wear this shoe too much on my backpacking trips. I was also doing a lot of conditioning for the Allegheny 100. So I still have very limited mileage in this shoe at the moment. Only sitting at around 65 miles with this shoe. So that's why I'm sharing more my first impressions rather than giving you a full review of this shoe. Most of the time last year, I was just wearing Ultra Lone Peaks, the non-waterproof ones. And 
again, most of the time I was able to get away with just wearing those with my regular Injinji socks. Hopefully that'll change this year and hopefully I'll be able to use these a lot more throughout the rest of this winter that's coming up. We'll see what happens with the conditions. I look forward to continuing to use this shoe and seeing how it holds up over time and sharing an additional video with all of you as I get more mileage in with this shoe. So there you have it. A closer look at the Ultra Olympus 5 Mid Gore-Tex version. If you have any questions on this shoe or anything else in my other videos, please feel free to leave them in a comment below or you can contact me at any time at reachyoursummit.net. Also, what are you using for your winter footwear? Love to hear what all of you are finding to work best for you. Leave that in a comment below as well. I hope you found this helpful. If you like this video, hit the like button. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And until the next one, see you on the trail.